Nice. Yeah, it's, um, I've, I've been really enjoying the training. Um, even a lot of the multi-sport stuff I, done, I do is, is based around, you know, really similar training anyway. Um, but uh, for me, last, well, last summer, um, like 12 months ago, I was, I was really, I'd sort of fallen off the cliff as far as just pushed everything too hard and uh, was in a bit of forced recovery mode and um, it, it's taken a long time to to sort of get back to where I feel like I'm 100% and um, the last few months I definitely feel like I'm firing on all cylinders again and uh, and that's just a, um, I guess I just, uh, I feel um, a huge amount of gratitude that I can actually feel that again and you know, cause, it, yeah, it gets a pretty dark place sometimes when you when you're not well and, and you just n never know if you're gonna gonna be able to make it back to the level that you were at before. So uh, I've just been um, just been loving you know that those sort of sensations you have when you're going well and, and just um, um, yeah and and it's nice just to have a a summer where it's just a slightly different challenge again. So uh, you know, it's um, yeah just. Uh, just looking forward to racing, really. I think, like everyone here, you know, everyone's put the time in, and now that yeah, we're sort of sitting around twiddling our thumbs until till Saturday. Mm -hmm. It's such an early season race, this one. I mean, most most of the other triathlon pros around the world look at guys like yourself, Dylan and Scott and Dougal, and say you're crazy for doing a, an iron distance race in January. But how have you managed to to stay focused through what can be a a very troublesome festive season. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pretty lean Christmas um, this year. So we've we've sort of planned a. Uh, my wife and I would think we'll we'll have a bit of a Christmas after after coast. That's our last major race for the for the summer. So, uh, but it, it just comes down to priorities, and you know I don't have um, I haven't made any plans for racing um, after after February for the rest of the year essentially. So. Um, there's no pressure to, to try and keep the form up and, and I've got a lot of other things uh, sort of going on as well now so um, because it's been a been able to sort of break it down and just say okay well this got to be got to be on it and focused for this block of time and then you know we can kind of let it all go a bit for a while and uh, and so I think sort of knowing that that it's finite that you know that there is a, the ends in sight uh, that's been really helpful and, in terms of preparing for the, the pacing that's obviously involved in iron distance race, I mean, it's a very different game now. It's more iron distance races are more races, as you guys know, more like a 70.3 or a half iron distance race these days. Is there anything you've done in training to, to get yourself ready for the pacing element of, of Saturday's race? Uh, no, I think that a, a really big part for me is, um, and one of the advantages I've got is just experience, you know, 15 years of, of racing, endurance racing. And, um, and so many different um, variables, you know, that I'm used to racing with. So here, it's actually really easy to control. You know, there's there's so few variables that it's, it makes it a very very simple race to um, to get your head around and to and to do. And you know, the racing has changed, but at the end of the day, the times aren't really, except for a couple of courses mm -hmm. around the world, the times are no faster than what they were ten years ago. Um, and so I think if um, just you know if I sort of focus on on it in the same way that I did sort of four or five years ago when I was last racing on distance racing, then I think uh, can't go too far wrong really.